Hey, this is Tim from Harrison Consoles. Today I'm going to show you the export features that we have available to us in Mixbus, starting with exporting an entire mix. So the first thing we're going to want to pay attention to is our start and end points. If you're not seeing these in your timeline, just right click on your timeline and make sure that markers is selected. The start and end points essentially represent where the file, the export is going to begin and end. And so what I've done here is I faded out all of my tracks before my end point. And I can grab this end point, I can move it anywhere I like, but I want to have a little bit of silence at the end of my song uh, before the actual end of the file. So I've just moved my end point out just a little bit past the end of the song here. And now I essentially want to do the same thing with my start point. So the very first element in the song is the click count off here that the drummer does. And originally we were going to get rid of this in the song, but I actually want to keep it in the mix. I like it there. So what I can do to trim all my tracks up to that point is either use uh, Command A or Control A to select all my tracks. And then using the Smart tool, I can go ahead and trim tracks up to the point that I need. So right there is right before that click count off. And I want to fade these tracks in so it's not so abrupt. I don't want the dead air to be the first thing on the track. I kind of want it to fade in gracefully so it kind of comes into the session. And th none of this will really be audible. I mean, it'll the first thing that most people will hear is just the click count off because everything else is so low. Let me play this for you. Yeah, so it comes right in there. Now I'm going to move my start point to a little bit before uh, my audio comes in. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a little gap of silence in there. Basically, it's for most consumer CD players. Some of them will cut off a little bit of the beginning of a track and it's very very minuscule amount but that's the reason I kind of like to have a little bit of silence uh, between my start point and the beginning of the actual track. Once we've got our start and end points where we want them we just say export export session to audio file and so what this is doing it's, is it's exporting our entire finished mix through whatever export source we select. I'm selecting the master output because this is the final mix. I want it to be stereo. I've got different file types I can select here. So WAVE, AIFF, FLAC, um, but I'm just going to keep this in WAVE. I want to export this as 16-bit because I'm going to put it right onto a CD. Um, the actual session was recorded at 24-bit, so if I was sending this to uh, someone else to work on, I'd probably just keep it in 24-bit. Since I'm going to uh, Redbook CD, I'm just going to make it 16-bit. And then sample rate as well. The session was actually recorded at 48 kilohertz. So if I was going to send this to somebody else, I'd keep it at the same sample rate. Since I'm sending this to CD, I'm just going to put it at 44.1. Uh, conversion quality, I'm going to leave on best. And then I'm going to add a little dither here because I've converted it to, or I'm going to be converting it to 16-bit. Um, so I want to add a little bit of dither here for that reason. And then... It's as simple as selecting export. It's going to run through and export my track. Another option that we have available to us in the export dialog is to upload tracks to SoundCloud. To do that, we just select also upload to SoundCloud and decide if we want to make the file public or not. We name our song. So let's just call this mix one. Put in your username. And then after you type in your password, you can select export, and it'll also upload your export to SoundCloud automatically. I can also export any of the outputs in Mixbus by using the custom selection option. This means I can select tracks or a group of tracks and export those into a stereo or mono file. For example, let's say that I just want to export the drums from this session. I would select the left and right channels of the drum stem and then export those as a stereo file. 
Keep in mind that anything you select on this screen will be summed into a stereo or mono file, whichever you choose. The second option available to me in Mixbus is to export a range from the timeline. Now this is a live show that I mixed in Mixbus, but I want to just select one of the songs and export it, because the show itself is about 50 minutes long. I just want to export one of the songs from the middle. Let's say the song starts and ends in this range here. After I've selected my range, I right click and select export range. It brings up the dialog box. It's exactly the same dialog box as when I'm exporting from a start and end point. After I've selected all of my options and named my export, I want to name that, say, Live Mix Song 4. I select Export, and the timeline runs through and exports my selected range. We can also find this option under the Session menu by selecting Export, Export Selected Range to Audio File. The third export option allows us to export regions from the session. Now this bypasses any processing done by the channel strip, the mix bus, or the master bus. The only processing that is applied to a region that we want to export are fades, uh, region gain, and clip gain. Now we can export a region a couple different ways. We can right click on it and select export from the menu. And you'll notice that this looks similar to um, the actual export menu when we're exporting an entire mix. We can select our options and just select export to export the file. The other way that we get to this is through the session menu. Select export and export selected regions to audio file. Same dialog. The fourth option allows us to export multiple audio files using range markers. The first thing we want to do is make sure that range markers are actually shown in our timeline. We right click on the timeline and make sure ranges is selected. Take this live show again for example. Let's say that I had made ranges within this live show and named them after the songs. So let me do that now. So here I have two sets of range markers, each one named for the songs that they contain. And I can actually move these around. This is the start and end point of the actual range. Now what I do to export these is select Session, Export, Export Range Markers to Multiple Audio Files. So what this does is a little bit different. You're actually naming the directory that these files will go in. So I click on Browse, and let's see, let's name this Live Show. I'm going to keep all these options the same. I want it going out the master. I want the same sample rate, etc. Once I click Export, it'll run through each file. Once the export is finished, the folder that I created contains each range named respectively. We can also use range markers to export an entire mix and then export any part of a mix as a different file. A uh, popular use for this would be creating a teaser clip to post on Facebook or SoundCloud. It's really popular. I've seen a lot of bands doing it lately. We can do that really quickly in Mixbus. The first thing we'll want to do is create a range for our entire mix. And we can do that pretty quickly by right clicking on our start marker and creating a range to the next marker. So if I have no other markers in my session, it creates a uh, range from my start to end point. We're going to rename this full mix. 
And now I want to make the range for my teaser. So if I select just a 30 second range within my file, right click and say add range markers. I'm going to rename this teaser. And now I'm ready to export. Export. Export range markers to multiple audio files. And I can name this uh, folder just after the song. Again, when the export is finished, I have a folder with the name of my song, and it contains my full mix and my teaser, both ranges named respectively.